The movie starts by telling the story of the first god in China named Penggu. Penggu split the earth and the sky apart, then changed into the sun, moon, and other natural stuff like mountains and rivers. Later on, there was a goddess called Nuwa. She crafted a human out of clay and made them alive by breathing into them. When she passed away, she left behind a special thing called Fenxingbang. She told the gods living in Kunlun to protect it. People believed that Fenxingbang could save the whole world, but only the mightiest king of all could open it up. As the years went by, a new generation came to life in China's vast plains. During this time, there was a king named Chen Tum, who founded the Shang Dynasty. He had four dukes spread out in the four main directions, and 800 other kings in different parts of China acknowledged King Chen Tung as the top king. However, things changed 500 years later when King Siu Hu from the Jinzhou Kingdom didn't want to pay respect or give up his riches. Instead, he challenged King Di Yi of the Shang Dynasty. In response, King Di Yi sent his second son, Yin Shou, to the battlefield. Yin Shou led an army he trained personally. This unique army was made up of young men, sons of dukes and other kings who had been taken as hostages and trained by Yin Shou himself. Among them was Xiu Yao, the son of Xiu Hu. But since Xiu Hu had rebelled, Xiu Yao chose to do the unthinkable to bear the burden of his father's actions. After that, Yin Shou used catapults to attack the fortress of the Jinzhou Kingdom's army. When the Jinzhou Kingdom's fortress was in ruins, Yin Shou's forces moved closer, but they were met with thousands of arrows raining down on them. They kept advancing until they had to stop, because their horses were frightened by the fire. But Yin Shou had some clever ideas. He blindfolded all his horses and had them charge into the fortress, wreaking havoc on the troops from the Jinzhou Kingdom. They fought without mercy until there were only a few left. That's when Siu Hu and his daughter, Siu Danqi, tried to make a run for it towards the royal tomb. But Yin Shou and his crew intercepted them. In the fierce battle that followed, Siu Hu managed to wound Yin Shou while they were on top of a tomb. As Yin Shou bled, his blood dripped onto an old pitcher that happened to contain a fox spirit, which began to break free from its seal. After a hard-fought battle, Yin Shou managed to kill Siu Hu. When Da Ji saw her father fall, she decided to do the unthinkable to protect her honor. Shortly after, an avalanche buried the area. When it was all over, the young warriors were surprised to find Da Ji still alive, albeit looking pale and acting strangely. It turned out she had been possessed by the fox spirit from the pitcher. Initially, Yin Shou's followers wanted to harm Da Ji, but they couldn't resist her mesmerizing beauty. When Yin Shou saw Da Ji, who was incredibly enchanting, he decided to take her along with Siu Hu's head to the Shang Palace. At the palace, he presented Siu Hu's head to his father, King Da Yi. While Yin Shou tended to his injuries, Da Ji suddenly approached him and licked his wounds. Unexpectedly, this healed Yin Shou completely, and Da Ji learned that Yin Shou's deepest desire was to become the greatest king of all. She offered her power and body to help him achieve that desire, and Yin Shou eagerly accepted. Not long after, they threw a big party to celebrate their victory. But Yin Shou's older brother, Yin Shi, went crazy and killed King Di Yirite in the middle of the celebration. The soldiers quickly surrounded Yin Shi, and eventually one of Yin Shou's soldiers, Ji Fa, who happened to be the Duke of the Western Region's son, had to put Yin Shi down. Now, with both King Di Yi and his eldest son gone, the throne of the Shang Kingdom was supposed to go to Ying Shu. Meanwhile, up in Kun Lun, the gods were having a chat about giving the Fengshan Bang to Yin Shou. After their discussion, one of God Yuanxi, Tianzu's disciples, Zhang Ziya, bravely offered to give up his 40-year-earned immortality to deliver the Fengshan Bang to Yin Shou. God Yuanxi, Tianzu reminded Zhang Ziya that he'd lose his immortality, but Zhang Ziya was ready for it. So he set off on his journey, taking his two disciples, Na Zhao and Yang Jian, with him. A bit later, Yin Shou had a coronation ceremony. But during the event, the palace seer predicted trouble down the road because of the recent royal family murder, which put a curse on the Shang dynasty. When Yin Shou heard this, he promised to build a big wooden tower as a ritual to make the gods happy and protect the land. 
That night, Yin Shou's son, Yin Zhou, accidentally spotted a fox spirit eating a palace worker. Without thinking twice, Yin Zhao tried to catch it, but the fox spirit was quick and escaped into Yin Shou's room. When Yin Zhao got there, he saw his father and Da Ji getting all cozy. A little while later, Zhang Ziya and his two students arrived in the Shang Kingdom and noticed a stack of wood being piled up for Yin Shou's ceremony to the gods. Sadly, they were mistaken for slaves by one of the Shang soldiers. This really upset Nezhao, who tossed the guy and accidentally hit an elephant, making it go crazy and causing chaos. It almost knocked over some big wooden block. Nazao and Yang Xian luckily caught those block just in time to prevent them from hurting other workers. By chance, Yin Zhao saw their abilities, so he brought Zhang Ziya and his two students to meet King Yin Shou. Yin Zhao hoped they could help his father break a terrible curse. Meanwhile, an alchemist named Shen Lingbao was meeting with King Yin Shou to show off his ability to remove someone's head without killing them. He thought it might help Yin Shou with some ritual, but mastering this skill would take thousands of years, and Yin Shou didn't have that kind of time. So, he quickly sent Ling Bao away. Not long after, Yin Zhao showed up with Zhang Ziya, Ni Zhao, and Yang Jian. Zhang Ziya explained they had brought the Fengshan Bang for Yin Shou. It was believed to be a powerful object that could break any curse and become even stronger with human sacrifices. Upon hearing this, Yin Shou planned to sacrifice more people to make the heirloom more powerful. Realizing Yin Shou was evil, Zhang Ziya swiftly took the Fengshan Bang back and tricked everyone to make his getaway. Meanwhile, Na Zhao and Yang Jian battled those trying to chase Zhang Ziya. But Yin Zhao, along with his friend Ji Fu, managed to follow Zhang Ziya into the forest. Na Zhao and Yang Jian soon joined them. After a fierce fight, Ji Fu managed to take the Fengshan Bang from Zhang Ziya. However, he decided to toss it into the river. So, Zhang Ziya jumped in to retrieve it, but luckily, Na Zhao was able to save him. At the same time, Ling Bao met with his master, who appeared as the ocean, to tell him that they'd found the Fengshan Bang. His master then gave Ling Bao a new chant to help him get hold of the Fengshan Bang. On another note, Ji Fu's dad, Ji Chun, the Duke of the Western Region, was traveling to the kingdom because the four dukes had to welcome Yin Shou as the new king. While on the journey, Ji Chung found a green-skinned baby spirit. Feeling sorry for it, Ji Chung decided to take care of the baby. At that very moment, Zhang Ziya and his two students showed up and suggested that Ji Chung should get rid of the baby spirit before it turned evil. However, Ji Chung wanted to raise the baby, believing that whether someone turned out good or bad depended on how they were brought up. Hearing Ji Chung's wise words, Zhang Ziya proposed that they take the baby spirit to Kunlun to be cared of. Ji Chung agreed and named the baby spirit Li Chunzi. Before heading to the Shang Palace, Ji Chung secretly met with the three dukes from the east, south, and north regions. They were not happy about Yin Shou becoming king, especially because curses were causing problems in the Shang Kingdom, like diseases, smelly water, and failed crops all over the place. What's worse, many babies were dying because of Yin Shou's questionable methods to become king. Surprisingly, Ji Fo overheard the conversation and got really upset, thinking that the four dukes were betraying King Yin Shou. So he rounded up his troops and captured the four dukes, including his own dad, Ji Chun. When they got to the palace, Ji Fo explained to Yin Shou why he had captured the dukes. Hearing this, Yin Shou told his four warriors to execute the dukes, even though they were their own fathers, accusing them of betraying the king. In return, the four warriors would take over their father's positions as dukes. Chong Ying Bao, the Duke of the North Sun, didn't waste any time and killed his father to secure his position. But the son of the Duke of the South refused and attacked Yin Shou. However, Yin Shou fought back and killed both the Duke of the South and his son. As for the Duke of the East, he used his son's sword, Wen Huan, to take his own life in order to save Wen Huan. When it came to Ji Fo's turn, he cleverly argued that his father should take the blame for the other three Duke's betrayal, so Ji Chung should be executed publicly. As a result, Ji Chung was spared from death and instead got imprisoned for a little while.
On that night, while Yin Shou and Da Ji were taking a bath together, Queen Jian Yi showed up and asked Yin Shou to end her life, considering he'd already caused so much harm. Jian Yi hoped her death might make Yin Shou realize his wrongdoings, but Da Ji, who had become Yin Shou's favorite concubine, stepped in and told Jian Yi to enjoy life instead. At that moment, Jian Yi tried to harm Da Ji, but Da Ji turned the tables and ended up killing her instead. When Yin Zhao learned of this, he got really angry and wanted to kill Da Ji. However, when he got to Da Ji's room, he found the white fox he had been chasing earlier, and it turned out to be Da Ji in fox form. Yin Zhao got even more furious and attacked Da Ji. She managed to dodge all his blows, and when Yin Shou stepped in to intervene, he thought Yin Zhao wanted to harm him. So, he ordered his soldiers to capture Yin Zhao. Yin Zhao then leaped from a balcony to escape. Thankfully, Ji Fu was willing to help him get away. The next day, Yin Bao accused Ji Fu of hiding Yin Zhao. They argued until it turned into a fight. Fortunately, Ji Fu's older brother, Ji Kao, came to help Ji Fu out. On that night, Ji Kao met with Yin Shou and begged him to spare Ji Chun. He even offered to take Ji Chung's place and face execution so that his father could be set free. Yin Shou agreed to Ji Kao's request. After killing Ji Kao, Yin Shou cooked a meal from his flesh and served it to Ji Chun. At first, Ji Chung didn't realize what he was eating and enjoyed the meal. But when Yin Shou revealed that it was made from Ji Kao's flesh, Ji Chung was shocked and went crazy. Meanwhile, Yin Zhao was hiding at the high priest Bi Gun's place. At the same time, Zhang Ziya sneaked to Bi Gun's location but was caught by Ji Fa. Zhang Ziya then exposed Yin Shou's crimes, but Yin Zhao still believed his father was evil because of the influence of Da Ji. They teamed up to uncover Da Ji's true nature. The next day, while Yun Xiao and Da Ji were performing a ceremony for their ancestors, Ji Fu showed up and pretended to have captured Yin Zhao. Then, Bi Gun, the high priest leading the ceremony, started revealing that Da Ji was a fox spirit and planned to kill her. However, Yin Shou, who had fallen in love with Da Ji, stepped in and stopped Bi Gun's actions. Bi Gun then sacrificed his magical heart for Da Ji to consume, making the fox spirit leave her body. As Da Ji ate Bi Gun's heart, the fox spirit emerged from her. Yin Shou knew about the fox spirit but didn't seem to mind. Yin Shou explained that he had unsealed the jar containing the fox spirit, making it obedient to him and ready to do whatever he wanted. He even admitted that King De Yi's death had been ordered by the fox spirit. Bi Gun was shocked by Yin Shou's confession and believed that the Shang Dynasty was in big trouble. Meanwhile, Yin Jiao was deeply disappointed in his father and tried to attack him. Unfortunately, his attempts failed and he was captured by other guards. The fox spirit returned to Da Ji's body, and Yin Shou ordered Ji Fu to kill Ji Chun. If Ji Fu succeeded, he would become the crown prince of the Shang Dynasty and Yin Shou's heir. Ji Fu reluctantly followed Yin Shou's command and went to see his father. The next day, Ji Fu brought a wrapped, severed head. Meanwhile, there was a public execution of Yin Zhao. However, when it was time for the execution, Ji Fu suddenly attacked Yin Shou. Not only Ji Fu, but also other young soldiers rebelled to rescue Yin Zhao. When Yin Shou opened the cloth that Ji Fu had given him, it didn't contain Ji Chung's head, but instead soil. In the chaos, Ying Bao, who was greedy and still supported Yin Shou, approached Yin Zhao and beheaded him without hesitation. Shortly after that, Na Zhao and Yang Jin appeared and carried Yin Zhou's head and body to Kun Lun for healing. Meanwhile, Ji Fu was still locked in a fierce battle with Yin Shou. Eventually, Ji Fu managed to stab Yin Shou with his sword and put him in a barrel. Later, Ji Fu escaped with Jiang Ziya and some other young rebels. As for Ji Chun, who was still alive, he was riding a horse to get away but was stopped by Shang troops. Luckily, he was rescued by a green-skinned creature descending from the sky. The creature turned out to be Li Chun Zi, the green spirit Ji Chun had saved when he was a baby. This time, Li Chun Zi returned the favor by rescuing Ji Chun and taking him to his hometown, the city of Siki. Meanwhile, 
Ling Bao transferred his soul into two lion statues to chase after Ji Fu and Zhang Ziya. However, Ji Fu realized that the statues were after Zhang Ziya, who had the Fengshan Bang with him. Ji Fu and Zhang Ziya switched clothes to trick the statues. Then, Ji Fu rode his horse to trap the first lion statue in the forest and led the second lion statue to a waterfall. He even shot an arrow into the second statue's eye before jumping into the river. Not giving up, Ling Bao sent a group of crows to search for Zhang Ziya. After a while, Ji Fu managed to escape the river's flow and returned to the city of Siki, where he reunited with Ji Chun. After the battle settled down, Da Ji left the palace and found Yin Shou dead. She used her fox spirit powers to bring Yin Shou back to life. Meanwhile, Zhang Ziya was peacefully fishing by the river when he noticed a group of crows sent by Ling Bao. Sometime later, when Zhang, the chief general of the Shang dynasty, who had been away at war for a decade, finally returned to the capital along with his generals, including the four giant demon generals, and the story continues. The moral lesson from the story, when messing around with ancient jars, always remember to check the label or you might accidentally unleash a lively fox spirit.